Welcome everyone to Build 39 Part 2. So now that the build is complete, you can see how the decisions that we made for the configuration of the K-Slab's Mercury S8 have affected the layout and the final aesthetics. And the reason we decided on this configuration was for just a bit more of a unique S8 build. So, you know, with this top view down onto the GPUs, a view that you normally wouldn't have of the components and also the front view it definitely makes for a little bit more of a unique build and that's why these options were always great to have from case labs because you could always do something different every time and then i decided for the parallel configuration for the cpu loop just because in series it was going to end up not looking very symmetrical a bit of a mess and surprisingly even more fittings so the pump and res combos that we've used, Singularity Computers Proteum, the 150 millimeter version. And that was so that we could still install the two hard drives down here, which I had to do a small mod to mount them there. And also the Aquero 6 XT, and just to allow room for all of the cables, because when you have a horizontally mounted motherboard, all of the cables end up underneath with the PSU, and it tends to be a little bit more messy there's just not a whole lot you can do about it because the components are suspended in midair instead of being run along panels. But, you know, you just follow the kind of natural shortest route for the cables and it works out fairly well, but yeah, definitely not quite as clean as having them all running along a panel where you can tie them down and route them exactly where you want them. So let's take a look at the loops, starting with the CPU loop. So coming out of the pump top here on this side, we go across to the mono block. And I've used a Q fitting here. So this has, actually it's a, a T fitting, it has an opening on two sides. It doesn't have an opening on the top, this one. The Q fitting is this one here, which has an opening on both sides and also one on the top. And on the other side there, I used a 90 degree dual rotary. And you can see we have a lot of bends in these tubes. This was a little bit of a difficult configuration. So we have in this tube one bend to get over the memory and then another bend. And this one there is one, two as well. So then up into the 360 millimeter radiator at the top, back down again, offset in the tube with a 90 degree bend into the Q fitting. 15 millimeter extension down into the mono block. So full parallel configuration for this loop with the mono block and the 360 millimeter radiator in parallel. But you could see when I was filling this loop how effective it actually is. The flow is still excellent through both of the components. Of course, at first when it's full of air, it's not and the pump is cavitating because the pump's not moving any coolant anyway. So the first component it starts going through is obviously the first one mainly when the second one is up a lot higher. But as soon as the pump gains traction and stops cavitating, everything starts to flow properly. And the flow in this loop, being a very short loop, is extremely high. So then we go straight back across into a 90 degree single with a 10 millimeter extension, another Q fitting for the drainage system. And this drainage system was a little bit difficult to fit in but it's a very easy access position and at the lowest point. So it did work out extremely well. This drainage system is very effective. It drains like 95% of the loop. So 90 degree single and a one inch D plug and then a bits power mini valve. For the GPU loop, we come out of the pump top with a 90 degree single, then a 90 degree dual. Simple tube with a single 90 degree bend into a 90 degree dual. Then we have a parallel configuration between the GPUs as I normally do. Then we come out with a 90 degree single. Offset in the tube, quite a big one. Then we have a through panel fitting, which was obviously a mod. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see down here, but we go down and into the 360 millimeter radiator. 
with a couple of extensions and a 90 degree single and then back out again and I've had to do a T fitting for the drainage system and you can just see the end of the drainage system just there which is another bits power mini valve and to get to that you would well it would be best to unplug a few of the cables actually what would be best is just to unplug all, everything from the Aquero 6 XT and remove it but removing that is very easy you just need to undo two screws on the front panel here once you remove this section and then this will come out and then you can get to the drainage systems through the front here you can also take this one out to give you plenty of space and you know you can run your soft tube out the side so fairly easy access there so we've used Singularity Computer's acrylic tube for the loop Bits Power Black Sparkle fittings 16 millimeter underneath the motherboard tray we have the SSDs and it turns out because these components were actually secondhand, most of them, one of the SSDs was faulty. There was some data corruption, so I removed that. And then we have the two Western Digital Black 4TB hard drives. Just a very small mod to install those. You only have to drill four mounting holes onto the fan cover that goes on the bottom of the case there. And then you can just mount the hard drive bay to the fan cover. You do have to use countersunk screws because the screws get in the way of mounting. Let's take a look around the other side of the build. So you can see there are a lot of cables connecting across the bottom of the motherboard and in the S8 there's no cable routing holes across the bottom there. You could maybe add some, do some modding, but the thing is with the 360 millimeter radiator mounted underneath there's no room to route them through this section and they would just get in the way of airflow and make things really cramped. So particularly that audio cable there just has to run all the way across and this is why I really detest front IO. I just find for myself I don't really use it and it always makes a mess of builds like that big USB 3 cable there which you can't sleeve. There's also another one through there which looks yeah just really messy so normally I like to remove front IO altogether whenever I can but due to the way this case was configured, it's something that was selected. So it was already on the front here. And now you can't really purchase replacement parts for case labs cases anymore. So I needed to add it. But you can see from this side with the 360 millimeter radiator in the bottom there, it looks balanced. You know, all of the positions are filled because the only other way that you can fill this section of the case, aside from mods obviously is with hard drives and I think there are three 3.5 inch hard drive bays that can take four drives each that can fit down there so you're just never going to fill all of that space in a way that looks balanced there's just going to be too much empty space down there so that was one of the big reasons that we selected this particular configuration with the two windows and this layout for the radiators the side panel ventilation, the grill, is custom. We designed and CNC machined that component. This is a service that we are now offering. We've kind of been offering this on a limited scale in the past, 
but we can now design do the CAD for anything and we can CNC machine laser cut plasma cut water jet cut any components that you want you know custom case panels any mods custom reservoirs manifolds custom cases so this is a new service that we are going to start offering at the beginning of 2019 